are get you're getting frustrated with them, just close your eyes and imagine you are 80 years old and you have a time machine that is bringing you right back to this moment and this is the only moment you will get with them again oh, when they're young. Wow. Like personally, if someone's coming at you or attacking you or making you wrong, how do you keep your cool and not get defensive and take things personally? Or do you? It's very natural to take things personally, but what I say in before I want to take things personally is I'll say, I'll say, put it down, Jefferson. I'll say, put it down. Most of the time when we're taking something personally, we're picking something up that nobody asks us to carry. And we're just choosing to hold on to it. Choosing to say, this was meant for me. And that's not always the case. And too many times we get, somebody says, why are you taking this so personally? And they turn around, we're holding it all. Like, well, why are you holding that? I didn't ask you to hold any of that. So you, you, you get in a position to where the how personal you take something is a direct reflection of how much grace you give other people. And if I start to take things too personally, oh, well, somebody's just going slow in front of me on purpose. They're showing up late because they want to show a sign to me. It's just all these different ways of treating things negatively. For the most part, you take it personally. And then that's, you just drop it. Drop that thought because you're not giving them enough grace. Somebody can make me happy, somebody can make me unhappy. These privileges I kept to myself. It's time you do that too. Because if somebody else can decide what can happen within you right now, isn't this the ultimate slavery? How I am is my choice, this is my way. No matter what they do, I'm like this. Because I have not given that freedom to anybody, that somebody can freak me, somebody can make me angry, somebody can make me happy, somebody can make me unhappy. person doesn't want you to feel good. Because feeling good is vulnerable, and vulnerability equals death. When we get into the emotions of positivity, whether it's love, joy, connection, whatever it might be, your nervous system says, no, 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 hold on a second. You cannot feel joy today, because if you do, you'll be hurt like you were in the past. And so what happens is we have your nervous system versus your heart. What's going to stand in your way of bringing your purpose to life? Fear is sort of a broad term. The real truth is unhealed emotional trauma. Typically, it takes a moment or two to be traumatized. It shouldn't take two fucking decades to be untraumatized. So if you feel like you're getting stuck in a certain area, stuck is safe. So it's not necessarily bad because it's a great survival strategy. However, not so good for optimizing your life and thriving. Because if you're scared of something that you don't understand and you rally against it, you cut yourself off from understanding what could help influence it. Because if you're hating something, you can't influence it. Fear is a compass showing you where to go. So if you want to know what to do, look at the things you're most afraid of doing and just do it until you're not afraid of it anymore. There is no honor in clinging to things that no longer add value to your life. And I've seen this so many times where people hold on to things because they see it as honorable. I'm not putting it in the landfill. And when you're doing that, you're just letting it decompose on your shelf. And you can choose to let those things decompose wherever you want. But clinging has no honor. Yeah, and one might even say it's dishonorable in a way because you're disrespecting yourself through all that claim. You gotta change that shit, man. Yeah, but you don't understand my life, David. Yeah, I do. <laughs> That's the thing about it. I get that mentality. I once had that mentality that no one understands what the fuck I'm going through. This is where self-esteem is an obsession of mine. Not delusion, because that's what a lot of modern parenting does. I remember trying to make an excuse for striking out in a baseball game and trying to use the sun in oh, my no. eyes as an excuse. She didn't let me do it. And I became very accountable because of those levels of parenting and realities. And that accountability led to so much happiness. It was this weird balance that my mom created between deep confidence, but accountability and truth very subtly. Talk about childhood forming you. It's amazing to me sentences change people's lives. People change in four different seasons. People change when they hurt enough they have to, when they see enough they're inspired to, when they learn enough that they want to, and when they receive enough that they're able to. Those are the four times that people change.
smile, only on the bottom half of the face. You can even go, uh, uh. It doesn't feel so good, right? It feels inauthentic. Now go all the way up into your eyes. So smile all the way up into the upper cheek muscles. Ah, that should feel so much better. So what's interesting about this facial expression is it causes our own happiness. And we also catch it when we see it. Researchers at the University of Finland looked at these two facial expressions, and they had participants look at photos of people with real happiness and fake happiness. They found that when they showed participants pictures of the real happiness smile, those emotions caught, they caught the positive emotions, and they themselves had a positive mood change. But when they looked at the face with the fake happiness smile, they caught nothing. In other words, if we show up to events that we're ambivalent about, interact with people that we don't really like, we become less memorable. This doesn't just happen in person, it also happens on the phone. There was a study that I found pretty exciting. They said the part of your brain that you get anxiety from is the same part of your brain that has gratitude. You can't be grateful and anxious at the same time. So then in the Bible where it goes, instead of being anxious, be grateful. It's so, this when is you so told me that. crazy to think that they're calling out legitimate things that scientists have found out about. think hurt people hurt people. One, I think when you're hurt, you think anger is a strength. You think bitterness is a strength. Because if you stop and think about it, when you're bitter, you don't feel weak. See, when you're angry, you don't feel weak. You feel power, powerful, you feel powerful, strong. Yeah, and so what happens is that these negative emotions hide your own vulnerability and, and weakness and pain. So as long as I'm bitter, I don't have to think about the fact that I've been betrayed. Wow. As long as I'm angry, I don't have to think about the fact that I'm so deeply wounded, I can't even deal with it. And so we use these negative emotions to feel powerful. And it's the most terrifying thing in the world to let go of those negative emotions because now you're completely powerless. And, and you have to trust it. That if you can let go of hate, that love is more powerful. That if you can let go of bitterness, that forgiveness is more powerful. That if you can stop hurting people, that you will not get more hurt. But here's, here's the problem. Whenever you love, you risk being hurt. So many women specifically, and this is like coming just from my perspective, hold themselves back from doing anything for multiple reasons. But one, they think like, oh, I'm, I could never do that. I'm not ready. I'm not ready enough. You will never, I'm never be, ready for it. You will never be ready enough, no matter, you know, if, if you sit back and you reflect after, you're going to be like, oh, I could have done this better. I could have done this better. I should have done this better. It is always how it works. You will never be fully ready enough. Do it anyways. Another big takeaway from doing as many things as I, I've done, um, obviously, mindset is huge. If you want to do it, just go freaking do it. There's so many women also that will hold themselves back from doing anything for the fear of being judged or looking silly or looking stupid and i know that sounds coming because i'm, I'm going to be 32 coming up here and you know you think that that should dissipate the older you get like you shouldn't care what people think you know you shouldn't whatever but so many women do they're embarrassed to look a certain way they're embarrassed to look stupid they're embarrassed to try something new for fear of being like oh i'm not gonna the only thing that you're hurting is yourself right